exploited really heavily. So, unfortunately, if you are an alpha character, you can't really do it until you subscribe or you you get a plex or whatever. But you know, it's good to it's good to know the basics if it's something you you consider doing in future. So, every like I said, every planet in the game has resources on it. If you click on the link that I put in the fleet channel, that hands.io slash pi, on the left hand side you can see the eight types of planets that there are. There's barren, there's gas, there's ice, lava, oceanic, plasma, storm and temperate. Now whatever corner of the galaxy you decide to start doing your PI on, whether it's in Jeta, whether it's out here in Pure Blind or whether it's in a wormhole somewhere, each kind of those planets will produce the same resources. So if you hover over the barren planet and then click on it you can see that it creates uh, aqueous liquids, base metals, carbon compounds, microorganisms and noble metals. So every single barren planet that's in the game will have those resources on it. The difference is is that the amount of those resources is based on the sex status of the system that you're in. So if you were obviously to try and do PI and Jeta, which is I think a not a 0 0.9 plus system, and you find a barren planet on there and think well I'm going to do PI and Jeta because then I can just sell it straight on the market. Uh, you're going to be in for a world of pain because you will not be able to sustainably pull a decent amount of resources from that planet. High-sec is the worst because obviously the sex status is the, the highest. Low-sec is a little bit better. Null-sec is good and obviously because wormhole is a negative one, wormhole is the uh, where you do god tier PI. Um, another thing you need to bear in mind if you're wanting to start doing PI uh, anywhere is that you pay a tax on what you import and export from the planet which is paid directly to the person that owns the structure that orbits the planet um, in high and low sec these tend to be quite high and there's also an additional empire tax that CCP take off you but there's a skill for that to, to lower that so you obviously want to be friendly with the people who own the uh, the structure on that's orbiting the planet because otherwise you might end up paying an absolute fortune in taxes. So obviously this wouldn't be easy without some sort of skill requirements now. So um, luckily th there is only a small number of skills to uh, that are required. So if you click on your little skill uh, skill window and then click on the planet management tab you can see there's five skills you have uh, remote sensing if you hover over that that says the ability to gather and analyze remote sensing data from satellites in orbit around a planet and produce properly calibrated surveys so what this basically means is that it allows you to scan planets um, in systems that are further away than you are so obviously if you don't have the skill trained you can only really scan the planets in the solar system you are train it to level 1 you might be able to get to the system next door or next door but 1 if you train it to level 5 you can cover about 9 light years which I think is about half a region's worth so if you're out here in, in Q5 and you've got remote sensing trained to level 5 you could probably get to halfway across pure blind scanning the, the planets there and then you've got planetology which is the understanding of planet evolution allowing you to better interpret data from scans of planets for resources and we'll come to scanning planets in a moment advanced planetology obviously is that but even better and then the most important two for uh, for PI are command center upgrades and interplanetary consolidation interplanetary consolidation uh, for every level you train that you gain the ability to put a colony on another planet so with your base skills, a, a day one uh, character that train that uh, pays for a subscription or plexes or whatever, you can set up a colony on one planet. So obviously if you train interplanetary consolidation to level 5, you 
you get six planets. Every character can have a maximum of six planets. So if you have three character slots on your account, you can have 18 planets if you really get into it. And command center upgrades, that is a skill that um, gives you more uh, CPU and power grid on the command center that you'll drop on the planet. It's like a f like um, fitting, like you would for a ship. Every facility that you put on a planet takes some sort of resource of uh, CPU and power grid. Command center upgrades means that you can put more facilities on the planet. One other skill that you'll need is Galente Industrial, because the Galente in uh, a moment of wisdom for themselves, they produced an industrial ship that has a specialised bay just for PI, the Epithel. That's always a good skill to have. Obviously, if you start off as a Galente character, you uh, you have that skill already trained, so that's not something you need to worry about. Just let me uh, let me link the ship for you, just in case. It just looks like every other uh, Galente Industrial, but it has the uh, the extra bay, which with my skills, uh, where is it now? Planetary Commodities Hold Capacity, that's 45,000 M3. That's quite a lot of PI you can hold in it. So those are the skills, obviously. So if you go back to um, that hands.io you can see all the different resources so the resources if you look at that the, the link if you go from left to right on that screen the, um, the quantities are higher on the left hand side so the aqueous liquids, that's the raw material you get from the planet. You could have 50,000 of that and it might only be 500 M3. Whereas the P4s on the right hand side, like your broadcast nodes, your response drones and nano factories, they're 1,000 M3 each. And you'll obviously only maybe have a couple of them from getting from your factories. So it is, you do kind of want to move less of the lower tier stuff and more of the higher tier stuff but if you're just getting into it to start off with you don't need to really worry about that to uh, to begin with so a lot of the pi materials the uh, the refined ones some of them go into um, t2 production like construction blocks um, mechanical parts things like that nanites that's used in nanite paste um, rocket fuel that gets used in T2 missiles and things but the P3s and the P4s that's the two on the right hand side they're used for um, for structures um, I think they get used for a lot of the capitals now um, mobile tractor units things like that they all get used in the, the construction of those the, uh, the markets are alright for them at the moment it was uh, when Citadel first came out the uh, the market for P4s especially exploded because obviously there was a massive demand for them all. Those were the good days when you could make a, a, a lot of money. So the question you might all be asking now is how do I get started? So if you're just getting into PI or you've, you've dabbled in it a little bit and you might be a bit overwhelmed by the amount of things that you can see on that, that, uh, that website what I tend to tell people is um, concentrate on one thing so you might concentrate on construction blocks because like I said that's used in T2 T2 uh, shipbuilding and things like that or you could uh, concentrate on things that go into fuel blocks obviously there's a massive demand for fuel blocks with all the structures that we've got and people wanting to do reactions and stuff like that so if you load up a fuel block blueprint in the game I'll find one and link it I've linked helium fuel blocks blueprint for it and you can see on the required input materials there's enriched uranium oxygen 
mechanical parts, coolant and robotics. If you look on the uh, the earlier website you can see that the majority of those are P2s, oxygen is a P1 and robotics is a P3. Um, so you could, if you, you want to go simple, you could just concentrate on oxygen first because that's I said that's a that's a P1. You don't have to do a lot of uh, faffing around to make that. Good ones, mechanical parts, enriched uranium. For today, I'm going to show you how to make construction blocks, though. So, if you hover over construction blocks on the Hans website, you can see that I'll tell you what I'll link it in game. I can't link it in game. Uh, construction blocks. They need reactive metals which come from base metals and they need toxic metals which come from heavy metals now you can see all the planets that you can get those materials from on the left so what you could do is you can one strategy that you can do is you can use one planet for getting the base metals one planet for getting the heavy metals and then one planet as a factory planet to put them all together the other way of doing it is doing it all on one planet. Now obviously you won't make as many because you've only got the one planet doing it all. Um, but it frees up another two planetary slots if you've got that skill trained. So obviously you could do three different planets making three different things. Or you could have like the first uh, the first plan where you have two planets extracting and one putting it all together. I'm going to show you the, the second method. So you can see that you can get both base metals and heavy metals from uh, lava planets and plasma planets. So now you want to find where your lava planets and your plasma planets are. So if you go to the agency tab and then you go to resource harvesting then to planetary industry now this brings up a, a lovely little window where you can see uh, there's some filters on the left so obviously we're in Q5 so we'll set it to within two jumps of Q5 any security and we're going to look for a lava planet So if you tick all the boxes, untick all the boxes, sorry, and then just leave lava ticked, it should give you five planets within the two jumps that we set. As you can see, there's one in Q52, there's one in MTAC Y, there's one in RTAC 2, one in GM, one in XQ. And seeing as we are in Q5 ourselves, we're going to choose that one. And you can see there, underneath, on the right hand side, the resources from that planet and the different bars. Obviously, the further to the right each bar is, the better that pocket of resources is on the planet. So if you've got the choice between, uh, say, this one and the one in MTAC Y, we needed uh, base metals and heavy metals. So if you hover over the base metals, you can see that that's got a resource density of 30%, and heavy metals is 40%. If you look in the one in MY, base metals is 34, heavy metals is 68. So that one's a better planet to do it on because obviously the, res the, the thing of the um, resources are denser on the planet so that you know, you'll be able to extract more from it. Is there a skill required in order to see those bars? I mean, I can see the bars, but they're all empty for me because I haven't got any of the PI skills. Uh, it will be. Um, Planetology. Planetology gives you the a better. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, planetology. I think it's just resource uh, remote sensing. I think. Okay, so turn that up. Yeah, because um, planetology gives you a better idea of where the the, the resource pockets are. Because you know, when when we go to the next bit, I'll uh, you'll be able to see where the resources are. Because if if uh, if you're all in Q5, you should be able to see it. So if you can see the little planet icon 
next to the Q52 planet in the agency window and then you hover over it, it says view planetary industry so if you click on it you get a wonderful little screen with the planet on it you can scroll it around, spin the planet around, zoom in, zoom out and on the left you have uh, two options you have build and scan so if you click scan you hover over scan actually you can see that it shows you your remote sensing skill, your planetology skill and your advanced planetology skill um, if you click on scan you have a bar that goes from blue to white and then underneath that you have the five different um, resources that are obviously on all lava planets like I said and we want base metals and heavy metals so if we click on base metals you should be able to see some bluey green areas pop up on the planet now now these are the, these are the hot spots this is where the base metals are at the most dense and then if you click on heavy metals now for me it's it's very uh, very dark but it doesn't look as if there's that many hot spots so what you do now is the bar that goes from blue to white if you click on the little corner symbol next to the white bit and drag it to the left if you drag it over halfway all the dark patches now should start turning green then yellow then orange then red and then white the white pockets are where you need to be aiming for that is the highest density on the planet one thing to bear in mind though is that the more active a planet is harvested by people the hot spots start to move so obviously if you're a, a renter living in deep null somewhere or in, in your own one man corp in a wormhole that's not something you need to worry about whereas if you're doing it in one DQ with a thousand other goons you're all attacking the same planet that's going to be spinning around all the time so you're constantly having to move your extractors that you're going to deploy so we're going to be looking for base metals and heavy metals we kind of want the hot spots to be in relatively close proximity to each other so if you try and find two white blobs for each and then maybe pick a point in between them that is where we're going to drop our command center so obviously for each different planet type there is a different um, command center you can't buy a barren one and expect it to work on a gas planet you have to have the planet specific one what I, I've noticed is where like base metals are concentrated it's where heavy metals aren't if you know what I mean yeah yeah that is that is something um, you might have to kind of um, compromise if, if you are going to follow my method obviously if you, you're doing a planet for each individual resource that you want you don't have to worry about it you can just plonk it in the best spot and not have to worry about it um, so obviously you want a command center now obviously you can buy them off the market or if you ask the lovely people in the dojo they will give you them out for free so I'm gonna build buy one off the market now because I'm recording it and you'll be able to see what I'm doing uh, you can buy one if you want and try it it's entirely up to you or just watch the video back later if you want so I want a lava command center There's 48 for sale, oh no there's not, there's 54 for sale in QTAP 5. So I just buy one, go to my hangar. Now what you need for this is you need an industrial strip with a 1000 meter cubed cargo bay unfortunately you can't really use the epiphone because it's cargo bay is small 
So I, I've got myself a Neuris as well that I can use for uh, for deploying command centres. So drop it in the Neuris. Get in it. Now to deploy a command centre you need to be in space in the system where you want to drop it. So I obviously if I wanted to drop one in RTAT 2 I can't do it from QTAT 5 in the Fortisar. So I'm going to undock. The good thing is though is that you can do it while on tether. So all you need to do is just undock, control space, and you can do it from the safety, from the of, the tether. safety of tether. So you haven't actually got to be at the planet at all, just in no, the same system? No, not to, not not to deploy to the to command centre and not to do any building. Uh, you do when you want to go and start collecting the resources, but we'll, we'll cover that in a bit. So if you go back to the agency window, we click on the planet, we click view planetary industry, and then we're going to scan for the materials again, let's try and find a good spot. Right, okay, I found a good spot. You click build, then the lava command centre, and where your mouse is now you'll find a little circle and you click that where you want it to be and then a, a new edit pending window will pop up and you click submit and that will drop the command centre there so now that you've built a command centre it will give you some more options for building you can build a lava extractor control unit which is the facility that actually gets the raw materials off the planet for you. Uh, you've got basic industry facility, that's the factory that will do your turn your raw PI materials into your P1. Uh, you've got uh, advanced, that will turn it your P1 into P2 and your P2 into P3. And there's also a specialised industrial facility that you make the P4s with but you can only um, deploy those on barren and temperate planets. So if you do decide to go down the, uh, the chain and start making more and more specialised things, if you do want to make those, you can only do them on barren and temperate planets, unfortunately. Uh, you've also got your storage facility. That's just like a, a storage silo. And you've got your launch pad. If you click on the command center, you can see you've got some options. You've got a upgrade button, a launch button, a storage button, stats, links, and routes. The only thing we're going to be worried about at the moment is upgrading, because I've got um, command center upgrades five. I can I can add all the uh, the upgrades to it. If you click the upgrade button, you've got a green box. If you click it, so that it goes all the way to the end you're upgrading it from level 1 to level 6 which gives you the, the top power output and the top CU, CPU output so you can fit as many factories as you possibly can it'll cost you 6.3 million ISK so I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade it so now I can fit as many um, buildings onto the planet now as I possibly can Just you can't downgrade it. I should have done that, but never mind. So okay, so what you want is you want three basic factories. What I do is I I'll build them. Get rid of that. Ah, okay, right. No, so I've got upgrade one set now, so you can just show you. So if I build one factory you can see in the top left the power load and CPU load goes up and you can also see it on your command center there so if I build a couple more factories I just realized you're obviously streaming your desktop where is that oh I'm not str I'm recording it so it'll go onto the uh, the YouTube Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay, I was just checking. I'm not meant to be watching it live because. I <laughs> no, I've uh, I've I've not I'm not streaming it. I'm recording it, so 
you will be able to watch it back at some point. But like I said, I feel like I tried, uh, I tried uh, talking you through the bits that I can, like with the agency window and everything. But this building bit, you know, obviously, it's getting recorded, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. No, no problem. So oh. I, I've built six basic factories, and it's used up mm, about 75% of the power load and the CPU load that you get with the basic upgrade of the uh, the command center. So obviously you need to feed those factories, so you need to build an extractor unit for each material. Now it's telling me you cannot construct another lab extractor control unit on this planet as it would dangerously overload your command center's power core. So this is where your command center upgrades come in. So if I whack it up to the max, it costs me 6.3 million ISK. It means I can now drop a extractor for the base metals and you can s you'll be able to see on the video that there is a big white circle around the where my mouse cursor is and that shows you the area of effect or area that you can deploy the actual extractor heads that you're going to set up in a minute so I'm just going to drop this extractor here and then if I click scan I can then I click base metals I can see where the the big white splodges for the um, the base metals and then I click build again another extractor and I'll put that one there and then we need a storage facility so I'll put that there and then we'll have a launch pad and then we click submit all those buildings are now on deployed on the planet surface if I want to remove those it'll click decommission and click that and it'll delete it so I'll replace that so what you need to do now is you need to create links between each facility now a link is like uh, like a power cable or a pipe or a conveyor belt whatever however way you want to imagine it the longer a link is between facilities the more power uh, power load and CPU load it uses. This is something you need to bear in mind if you decide to start doing PI on gas planets because gas planets are traditionally the biggest planets in the game. If you're curious as to how big a planet is you can click on the planet info window and QTAC5 planet 1, the lava planet that uh, I'm using as the example here, you can see that it radius is 2520 kilometers and it's quite small so any links between the facilities will be quite small they're not going to use up any of your precious resources but if we go on that QTAC 5 planet uh, 8 is a gas planet I'll show the info of that the radius of that one is 33,000 so it's well over 10, 15 times bigger than this one. So that will have an impact on how many facilities you can put on the planet because obviously it's going to be the links that you need to link between each building will um, consume some of the resources. So what you need to do once you've, once you've built all your buildings is you need to link them together. So I will link the extraction unit there to the storage and I'll link the storage to my other extractor. I'll link all my factories together and then my storage to my launch pad. So I've got the factories, I've got the extractors. Now I need to press submit. Obviously you can see that it'll it cost me a little bit more money there because I've, I've done some more building. Now you need to set up your extraction heads. This is the bits, this is like the miners, the, the mining facilities. So you click on the extraction uh, extraction control unit there is an install extraction program button a products button a stats links routes so if we click install extraction program you have a window with 10 little blue buttons that are uh, that are dark at the moment and then a big graph in the middle that's blank and then on the right hand side you have selected resource with the five resources on the planet and underneath that you have program duration from one hour to 14 days so the good thing about PI is that you could set this planet up for 14 days 
and not have to touch it again if you really want to or you could set the cycle up for one hour and keep checking it every hour if you keep checking it every hour you will get more resources but obviously no one in the right mind wants to keep checking it every hour so I normally have mine set for around three days so every three days I have to come back to each planet on each one of my characters and set my extractors back off again and we're looking for base metals uh, so the big white blob has come back up and if I install five extraction heads five little circles will come up with like an area where they're going to be scavenging the resources from if you hover over the, the circle a lot of arrows will come up you can click that and then drag it and as you drag it you can see that if I put it in the dark area I'm only getting 10 units per extraction cycle whereas if I put it in the yellow I'm getting 55 in the red I'm getting 79 and if I get put it in the white I'm getting 115 110, 115, 118 now so that's obviously the, a decent spot there so I'm just going to put all my extractors in this white bit and then we click start extraction so when we finish doing all our building this extraction unit is going to be extracting base metals from this lovely little area here what you need to do then is you need to click the products because you'll notice that under in red under, uh, under base metals is a big red word that says well a phrase that says not rooted that means that if you click submit now this will start harvesting all the materials but it's not going to put them anywhere that's what the link's for so if we click there and then click create route it goes to the storage and we click create route so that's ready now so once we click submit that will start harvesting the materials and it will drop them in the storage facility so what I'll do now is I'll go to the other extractor click install extraction program this is for heavy metals I'll set it for three days put five extraction heads on it again you'll see that on these even though it's in a white area it's only getting 102 units every cycle so we click start extraction click products click create route click the storage facility click create route again so now if I click submit now both of my harvesters are extracting resources they're going to drop it in the storage facility obviously you don't want it to stay in the storage facility you want it to go to your factories so we need to link the storage facility to the factories and then if we click on each factory you come up with a, a window like the others which has all the schematics for all the different tier 1 PI items you want to make so obviously if we're making construction blocks we want reactive metals which come from base metals so we find reactive metals on the list and we click install it will make 20 reactive metals every 30 minutes as long as it's getting resources fed to it so then like before we click uh, create a route we're going to put it in the storage facility create route we click the next one and the next one you'll notice that if you have several factories on one planet the game will remember what it is that you've selected for your previous factory and it'll just copy and paste uh, the schematics so all you need to do is just the routing so then on our other three factories we want uh, toxic metals which is down towards the bottom so we click install click on the storage facility create the route toxic metals storage facility create route and again okay so now when I click submit all those factories are ready to build the resources that we've asked them to but we need to also create the route from the storage facility so if we click on store not storage create route no routes 
if we click on routes you can see that there is a list of incoming uh, raw materials the base metals and the heavy metals there'll be 38,000 units of base metals coming in in the next 30 minutes and 36,000 units of heavy metals so then you need to click on the base metals click create route and you want to feed them into the factories if you try feeding it into a factory that is not set up for that individual material that you're trying to do it'll say lava, uh, lava basic industrial facility commodity not an ingredient in the current schematic so it won't let you try and put one thing in a factory that you've not set up for it it'll tell you that you can't do that so that's those three set up and then we go to heavy metals create route for that one So all our factories now are set up so that the extractors are extracting the raw materials they are feeding it into the storage facility here which is then feeding it into the factories and then those factories are feeding their finished product back into the storage the reason you use storage is that for every cycle that your extractor head pulls in the raw materials those raw materials if you didn't have storage would will feed straight into the factories but if those factories are full it fill up the storage links in be the, the, the links in between each facility and then anything else after that just gets lost so having a storage there creates a nice buffer of, uh, of materials so that your factories are running 24 hours so now we need to build uh, two advanced factories so we'll just plop that on there and we'll plop that one there Click submit again. We need to link them again. Click submit. So now, with two extractor units with five heads each, three base, uh, six basic factories, a storage unit, a launch pad, and two advanced industry units. I'm right on the edge of my re uh, resources now. I'm using 97.7 percent of the power. So having upgrades for the command center, if I didn't have that, I'd only maybe be able to have two extractor heads for each extractor, which obviously the more extractor heads you have, the more resources you dr you're you pulling up from the planet, the more materials you can make in the same space of time. So let me just set up the construction blocks and we click install. Now when we click in install for that, we don't want them to go to the storage, we want them to go to the launch pad. So click that one same again for that one click submit and then we need to set up the reactive metals and then the toxic Okay, so that that planet is now fully set up, so that I can go away now f and come back in three days, and my launch pad will have filled up with maybe a thousand units of construction blocks. So now, what you want to do is you want to obviously get those materials off the planet. So I'll say we've got away, and we've come back three days later, and we want to get the materials off the planet. How do you do that? Well, you get in your epithel, and you click on the planetary industry icon which is in your neocon you go to industry and it's the middle one that looks like a little planet click on that and you'll have a list of all the colonies that you have it's obviously on this character I've got four now and we want to go to the lava one so you click on the lava one you right click on it and at the bottom of the list you'll see customs office this is where your materials will be accessed from so you right click on customs office and then you can click on access customs office and in this box you can see that it's the QTAC 5 planet 1 orbital customs office it's got a tax rate of 5% and you can access your launch pad from here 
so in three days we'll come back and we'll have the construction blocks on that right hand side what you need to do then is you click on it and you drag it over to the left hand side and it'll turn green it will show you how much it's going to cost at the bottom left and then you click transfer so once you click transfer those items will have left the planet and will be in the customs office so then you right click again in the planetary industry window where you clicked on customs office and you can then warp to the customs office at zero so I'm just going to go and warp to this customs office now it's 6, six AU 7 AU warp so that's not the worst obviously if you're doing it in uh, NTAC 5 it's 120 AU system so I wouldn't recommend doing PI there if, unless you really want to once we land you'll see the big um, customs office in space you can click on it and there's the little box icon and you select an item window if you really want to but normally I just keep the tab open so then what you can do is click on your cargo bay and you can drag the item from the customs office and put it into your cargo bay and go back to the 40s R and put it in your hangar And that's pretty much it in terms of setting your uh, your facility up and obviously I know that you've not been able to watch me do it but hopefully you'll be able to uh, to watch the video and see what I did yeah that was great super useful thank you mm, no problem do you, does anyone have any questions no that's uh, great type uh, yeah I would so uh, you can do everything on tether apart from picking it up and moving it back yes. from yes. one planet to another. Yeah. What yeah. a good trick people do is if there's like cloaky campers in space and whatnot, because cloaky campers like to hide near Pocos because obviously there's an industrial ship that's going to be coming there at some point that probably isn't going to have guns or a scram on it or anything. What you can do is you can warp to the customs office, align your ship to the 40s R or to another structure, and as you're, oh no, no, sorry. You can only take resources out of the customs office when you're within two and a half thousand meters of it. So what you can do is you can activate a warp to another uh, structure. And when you're like halfway to warping or three quarters to warping, you can then drag the items to your cargo bay just before you hit you, you you hit the threshold of entering warp and then if anyone tries to get you then um, you can put the items back in the customs office so that if they do shoot you you've not lost your PI you've just lost the epithel which is cheap and if people don't uh, attack you you can quickly grab it and chuck it in your uh, in your, your cargo hold so you, you want so you, you want to spend, want as, spend as little time on grid with the poco as possible because obviously that's when you're yeah, that makes sense. yeah. Uh, and also um is there are we able to do it in any of the planets in our little region yep any any brave system you can do it in obviously you, if you really wanted to do it in a bundle log system you could do but you just have to bear in mind that because they're hostile they may have set their tax rates at 50 percent 100 percent so be paying a lot more in tax plus it's better to keep your money in uh, in our alliance and not funding the enemy isn't it yeah absolutely yeah but there's going to be a lot of us hitting a lot of these planets in our in our region so the further afield you go the better yeah yeah Obviously, um, Obviously um, yeah. in the new pocket in D2 around there, I don't know if they've if they've started replacing the Pocos over there. But obviously, if there's there's less traffic over there than there is here in Q5, the P doing PI there might be a little bit better because there's less people using the planets. Yep, yeah, I've got a I've got a miner over there. Actually, it's a good idea. Well, yeah, if you've if you've got like a couple of characters. Um, that aren't specifically trained into anything. Um, PI is probably the one thing 
that's left in the game that scales really really well with the more characters you have see I've got um, how many characters have I got trained into it now I've got s eight eight characters trained into it and all but two of them have got six planets so if I if I if I did the math and I did nothing but focused entirely on doing PI I think I could make maybe a couple of bill a month and that's that's money that I'll get uh, will be made when I'm at work when I'm asleep because as long as those uh, extractions extractors are running they'll run when you're not logged in when you when you're PvP and when you're mining and it's just really easy money to make if you're prepared to put the time into to set it up properly which is obviously the uh, the one drawback it's quite quite clicky it's the it's the part of it that I think puts a lot of people off setting up their uh, the factories for the first time yeah that that sounds about right it sounds like there's a lot of lot of uh, micromanagement to, to get it or keep it running properly yeah there is a bit um, if obviously if you're just getting started it can be a bit overwhelming but I think if you just if you persevere with it and you you sort of get into the habits of knowing what to do and when to do it and, and things like that it, it becomes quite easy then is there a way to, or is there a site that will tell you what you should probably look at uh, ma making and what to avoid, uh, f you know, for ISK? You... Personally, like I said at the start, if I, if I was just starting off in PI now, I'd be looking at what goes into fuel blocks. I'd be looking at what goes into T2 production, things like that. Um, I wouldn't bother trying to sell the raw materials because they're a pain in the ass to move and nobody really wants to move. People won't necessarily buy them off you unless they're going to use them themselves. You know, It's not something that you can take to Jeter and, and, and flip and make some money on because of the, of the size that they are. Um, other than that, you want to just look at things that are in high demand like I said fuel blocks uh, stuff for T2 production uh, stuff that will go into uh, ammunition and if they if anyone's building structures or building caps um, or NTUs and things like that you, you want to be looking at the P3s and P4s um, oh, there is one site just let me find it for you Okay, so I'm just going to link something for you in the in the fleet chat. Okay, so if you click on that link, um, this is the Fuzzworks website, and this shows you how much profit you can make if you focus on a specific item, and you buy the input materials so what you can do is um, instead of extracting from the planets you can just have a pure factory planet which is just nothing but factories um, a couple of silos and a launch pad so if you set the tax rate to 5% which is what the planets are around here and then you click on the top arrow near profit and then click it again you can see that the the item that you'll make the most money on is making broadcast nodes if you buy the neocoms the data chips the high-tech transmitters and then sell the finished product in Jita you'll make a 200,000 ISK per unit profit but obviously if you can't get those units in locally you'd have to pay them to get shipped in and then obviously your profits will go down yeah that makes sense. Has a great site. Thank you. No problem. I'm just looking at the list, and it looks like things like nanites would be useful, but livestock, I couldn't quite figure out how you would use that. Right. So, if I wanted to concentrate on a 
a P4 item. Yes. Would that be just a matter of logistics, like setting up a factory and then just bringing materials to and from there? Because you're not going to be able to make P4 stuff on one planet. Mm, yeah, you, you you can, I think, really realistically make P, P1s and P2s on a planet. If you wanted to do P3s and P4s, you'd have to have a separate planet set up for putting it all together. So I'll, I'll talk you through my setup. I make P4s. I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 6 characters currently just extracting and making P1s and P2s. And then Ted has two planets making P3s. And then one planet making the P4s. So, every th like I said, I, I set all my extractors up for three day cycles. And I've got it across three accounts. So I'll set one up, set him up for three days. The next day, I'll log into the next three characters, set them up for three days. And then the next day, if I remember, set the next three characters up for three days. And then obviously, I'm back to the first character again. And then I just wait until my uh, my launch pads are full. If there's no cloaky campers around, I'll go and uh, get the materials. Deliver them to my, uh, my main. Keep them all in a can. And then I'll just, every day or two, I'll go out and feed these factories. And that's, that's how my chain works. But again, it's 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 however much time you're prepared to put into it, the more money you'll make. Do you ship your stuff to Jita, or can you sell all of it locally? Uh, recently, uh -huh. um, I'll be honest with you, I've not paid a huge amount of attention to it in the last couple of weeks. But um, I have just sold most of mine to people in the Alliance because I think they've uh, they've been building some building some structures recently so some of it has gone to that the last 200 units that i had i've, I've just put on the market now in locally if they if they sell they sell if they don't i'll uh i'll consider taking him to jita but again like well, i said if you, if you if you aim for stuff for fuel blocks everyone is screaming for fuel blocks because obviously they want to run reactions and you need fuel blocks for reactions all the structures around the Alliance is probably always going to need f to buy fuel blocks and people will be building them because there's the, m the demand there, if you can help supply them with the uh, the materials happy days, you'll make some money What about a fuel box? Are they uh, a P2? No, a fuel block is a item that you build from a blueprint Ah yes, of course, yeah, sorry yeah, so you can see that the uh, they need stuff from ice and PI materials on it. So yeah, there's a uh, there's quite a demand for fuel blocks these days. So obviously, if you if if there's someone building them, they probably can't make enough of the P uh, the the items themselves. Probably there's probably uh, a couple of oddballs out there with thirty accounts. I know I used to play with a guy that had about 12 accounts and I had them all doing PI. But yeah, if you, I mean, if you if you focus on stuff for fuel blocks and like I said, stuff for T2 production, construction blocks, rocket fuel, things like that, nanites, and just advertise them in the marketplace, put them on the on the actual market, someone should buy them. If you, if you advertise it enough, someone should buy them. And if not, just wait till you've got a nice little pile and pay, uh, pray, play uh, Brave's little toaster to move him. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you very much. No problem. Does anyone else have any more questions? Oh, cheers, Ted. No problem. Yeah, thanks again. Really good. No worries. Hopefully, it's uh, like I said, the uh, the video will go out on the, uh, the Dojo channel on YouTube, and uh, you'll be able to watch, like I said, watch what I uh, watch what I did.
Hopefully it made it makes a bit more sense when you watch it. If you could stick a ping in when it goes up, uh, just to see me refresh it every now and then, that'd be great. But no drama if not. Well, what I'll try and do is I'll... Uh, are you in the, the fleet charm that's in game? That's it up. Uh, not at the moment, sorry. <laughs> when I couldn't sort of follow along in game anymore, I quit out. Alright, uh, okay. What's uh, what's your character name? Hang on, if you can just give me two seconds, I'll jump in. Because what I'll do is I'll just um, I'll just create a note with all you in it, and then uh, if I know that the uh, the video goes up, I'll uh, I'll just send you all a mail or something. Yeah, sounds great. Cheers. No problem. No problem. There you go. I'm in the fleet now. Right, no worries. I'll just copy all your names. Sorted. All your names are on the list now. So uh, if the video does go up, I'll um, I'll send you the mail. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, to see it in action. Well, no problem. Thanks. For, thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah thank I'm you. gonna go and buy some stuff and uh, go and have a look. See what I can. See if I can find some good planets. Cheers. Thank you for that. If you if you if you want to like have a proper play with it, do it on Sissy. Just go on this scene, just go mad. Just work out what works, what doesn't work, what you can do, what you can't do. And then you don't you don't waste any any money or anything like that in the, on the proper game. Oh, okay, I hadn't thought about that. It's a good idea. Cheers. No worries. Right, I'll, uh, we'll call it there then. All right, thanks again. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for your time.